Hi everyone. So this is going to be the last Mac and Scream episode for a while. The reason why is because this was the last one I recorded with my friends when I went on my trip to see them. They live a little bit away from me, so as such, I can't record any new episodes until I see them again. That said, there are going to be new fictional stories on Saturdays after this Saturday, and they will just be narrated stories, as I have been doing before. Also, I know several of you guys love the true crime and the true stories and all of that stuff, and I just wanted to remind you, don't worry, that stuff will still be uploaded on Tuesdays, so you have that to look forward to. And lastly, before we get into this episode of Mac and Scream, I just wanted to take this time to say thank you all so, so much for 1,000 subs. That is honestly bananas, and I cannot believe it. I just got monetized, and I'm so excited to continue my YouTube journey. Thank you all so much for the amazing support, and with that said, please enjoy this episode of the Mac and Scream Creepypasta Podcast. Alright guys, thank you and enjoy. Hello, and welcome to the Mac and Scream Creepypasta Podcast. Episode four. Is it four? It's four. It's four. Um, and if not, I can just upload this fourth, so it will be. Um, but what about the other four? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. But I am Ben, a.k.a. Assorted <laughs> Horrors, and I am joined today again by my friends, who are... Will who is also known as Will, because I still haven't made that YouTube channel. Good, yes. And? And Amber, and I don't have an alias, because I don't live a sketchy life, like right. other people. That's that's good. You don't put yourself out on the internet? No, not really. No, well, you are now. Good job. All right. Sweet. All right, so today we're going to be reading the sequel to what we read last time. And if you recall, last time we read uh, Grad Night at the Haunted Mansion by the wonderful and amazing David King, who got Disney World and Disneyland confused, but we forgive him. So, we are now reading his follow-up, which I did not know existed. So this is, I'm, I'm really shook at its existence, and I'm real, I have no idea what, what it's going to be. If you think that's amazing, I didn't know either story existed until really? yesterday. Wow. <laughs> that is stunning that people don't know things. All but right. to be fair, we ended yesterday by having some thoughts on what the end of the story actually meant. Yes. And Will said that he thinks Karen was a murderer. She murdered the poor boy. Yes. Well, maybe not intentionally, but... Well, maybe the story will tell you if it was intentional or not. <gasps> maybe <laughs> we'll find out if, if Will's theory that Mike... No, that Karen murdered Mike on accident. But I mean, if we're being really honest, no one cared about Mike no anyway. No one cared about Mike. I mean, that was pretty, pretty, you know, obvious throughout the story because he just disappeared, and they were like, "Ah, I guess we'll look for him." <laughs> oh, is he not I, where we thought he was? Yeah. Oh well. They eventually they did a missing person. Eventually. Eventually. They, yes. They finally got around to it. All right. So. How about we get started with this beautiful story this I discovered? Beautiful story called "The Man with the Cane." The Man with the Cane. Okay, so if you are unfamiliar with Grad Night at Haunted Mansion, uh, maybe you should read that first, and our uh, commentary on it in the previous episode would be helpful as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to go ahead and read this thing. And provide our thoughts on it throughout, and then give our thoughts at the end. All right. Let us begin. Let us begin. Go ahead, Ben. Okay, I'll start. All right. Recently, I read a story posted on a Disney forum I frequent. An account of three friends who tried to spend a night in Disneyland's Haunted Mansion back in the 80s. 
Since I don't know the author's name or gender, or even if said author is reading this, I'm not sure how to address him or her. <laughs> Hopefully whoever put the story out there in the first place will see this. I tried tracking the author down, and apparently the story had been posted on several forums and sites under different usernames. I'm not sure when it was reposted or where it originated, nor how long it's been circulating. There's even been a few versions where some sections differ, making me wonder what's been tweaked over time. But regardless, I read, I read it at first thinking nothing of it but half-assed ghost story. It was, well it was well researched, sure, but there were certain details that were off and raised doubts. I almost dismissed it entirely when there were utilidors mentioned, because only Walt Disney World had those. But that was before the prop rooms got brought up. <gasps> So he's um, revising um, his first story, yeah. which mm -hmm. I, I commend. Mm -hmm. Good, good on him. Good on him. All right. So my own story has lo has lot of similarities. Oh, maybe not so good because there's an article missing. Mm -hmm. My own story has lot of similarities, <laughs> and I doubt it's coincidental. I'm not sure how much this will clear things up, but that realization has prompted me to share my knowledge. Maybe get a few things off my chest. Oh. <clears throat> I grew up in Orlando, and have pretty much lived my whole life in close proximity to Walt Disney World. My mother met my father while working as a cast member at the Magic Kingdom, and now I work there myself, though I'd rather not say where. For as long as I can remember, I've listened to all kinds of urban myths and rumors circulated among cast members at the park, mainly through my parents. Mom got her start there back in the 70s, not long after the Magic King Kingdom first opened, and in 77 she finally bumped up from retail to attractions, which she had hoped for since she had been hired. Her first role was a hostess at the Haunted Mansion, a position she thoroughly enjoyed until one August night that same year when she encountered the man with the cane. The way she tells it, she was a little on edge that night. Earlier in the day, a four-year-old boy had climbed over a railing surrounding Cinderella's castle moat and drowned. These dang four-year-olds, man. Gotta stop taking them places. Mm -hmm. It was the first death in the park's short history, but it wouldn't be the last. Management tried to keep the incident as quiet as possible, so the other guests weren't disturbed. But word of it quickly spread among the cast members, and this was fresh on my mom's mind as she worked the loading area for the mansion. Guests would come through from the stretching rooms and board their doom buggies, blissfully unaware that a life had been lost in their midst. It's my turn, right? It is your turn. Okay. <laughs> she was working until late, the crowds getting lighter and lighter as the night dragged on, until they were down to one stretch room. The guests were coming few and far between, so there were long periods where it was just her watching the empty doom buggies flow endlessly out one dark corridor and down another, listening to the eerie music and sound effects. It was during one of these lonely spans of time that she saw him. From around the corner came a doom buggy that was occupied by a man, sitting right in the middle of the car. She described him to me as being gaunt, almost emaciated, looking dressed in a rumpled suit, hands resting on the handle of the cane set in front of him. He stared straight ahead with pale blue eyes set far back in his head, his expression bitterly grim. He didn't so much as twitch an eyebrow when my mom tried to get his attention, waving at him and saying hello. He just kept staring at some fixed point right in front of him as the doom buggy moved past and on into the rest of the ride. Immediately, my mom noted this car number, 67 and called the operator to, at unload on the phone to ask him about the man he had sent her. The operator responded that he hadn't sent her anyone, at which point both of them became very confused. Together they got in touch with their lead, and the three of them proceeded to wait, to wait at unload for the man to come around. Sure enough, car 67 arrived, but it was empty. Ooh. 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 Don't like that. Oh, Don't okay. like that. So we got creepy man in in um, ride vehicle, but with pale blue eyes. With so pale we blue definitely eyes. know he's a ghost or Bing Crosby. It's one of the two. It yes. is. It is definitely just old emaciated Bing Crosby. Right. Didn't the head um, 
the protagonist saw in the last story have blue eyes, or am I just making shit up? In the... uh, I think you're making that up. Okay. Never mind. I, well, see, I don't know. I don't think they mm. mentioned that. Okay. Not specifically, no. All right. All right. Maybe. <clears throat> but it's on you now, Ben. All right. You got it. There was no way the man could have sneaked out without anyone noticing. My mom never got to review the security camera footage, and to this day she's not sure if there even is any. But she is thoroughly convinced that what she saw was a ghost. Mm -hmm. It spooked her enough that she had a hard time working late at the mansion, when there were periods where she would be all alone and felt as if someone else was in the room with her, watching her and requested transfer shortly thereafter. She ended up at the tropical on the Tropical Serenade, which is the Enchanted Tiki Room today, a month or so later. But Mom was the first to see this apparition. Stories of the man with the cane began to circulate among CMs. Cast members. Aha, uh -huh, cast members working at the Haunted Mansion. And every so often, someone would catch a glimpse of him, usually riding alone in a dune buggy, but sometimes walking in a backstage area of the ride, often only seen reflected in a mirror. He was always described in the same way, gaunt, dressed in a suit, sunken eyes, and holding a cane. Some say he's a ghost of Yale Gracie, one of the Imagineers that built the Haunted Mansion, while others have claimed that he's much older, the spirit of a pilot whose small test plane went down on the land of Walt Disney World, would be built on. Back in the 1940s, oh, sorry, built on back in the 1940s. Needless to say, it became a local legend among the Haunted Mansion staff, and even those who didn't see him were unnerved that they might, especially if they had to work alone at night. So, of course, this was all going through my head when I went to work there at the mansion myself in the early 2000s. Unlike a lot of people, I've never been a big fan of the Haunted Mansion, though coming from a Disney family, I know a lot about it. I think the main reason is because I've always felt a bit uncomfortable around it. I blame my mom's ghost story, of course. Looking at the facade from a distance is fine, but the moment I pass the gates into the line, I get this prickle of inexplicable worry in the back of my brain, like the feeling that you get when you're in a dentist's waiting room about to get a tooth pulled. You know it's going to happen, and it won't be fun. Of course, the ride itself isn't really that scary, but that irrational feeling doesn't go away until I've left the area behind. I think that's why I opted to take the position as a hostess in the mansion, like mother, like daughter, I guess. Plus, I think it had to do with trying to overcome that stupid childhood fear. Anyway, I got the job and it was pretty normal for the most part. I got used to it after a while and even started to like the job despite the na that nagging tension. My supervisor, a senior cast member on the ride, was a woman named Karen! <gasps> and yes, I realize it could be a coincidence, but I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, oh, you gonna die, protagonist? Karen, I don't want to read the rest of the book! Karen! <laughs> <laughs> she was the one that basically got me acclima acclimate acclim I can't acclimatized that's not a word. acclimated I think see it's I was just, thinking acclimated. acclimated right I'm gonna go with acclimated it's an Imagineer word acclimatized like <laughs> is he getting paid to be an Imagineer right now I don't know all right then um so I'm gonna use the real word um she was the one that basically got me acclimated to the ride sassy and became a sort of mentor she was a little severe and seemed high strung like she was always on the alert for something to happen. She'd get on anyone's case if they made a shortcut of anything on the ride, citing safety reasons. But she seemed to me, well, she seemed to like me well enough, showed me some level of concern due to my apparent unease about working the attraction at night. I mentioned to her offhandedly once that working the mansion made me nervous due to the stories of the man with the cane. I recall it was just the two of us standing in the servant's corridor, which is a cast member only passage from the load area to the outside, and it was just around closing time, so it was just the two of us in that flickering room. She became very interested and asked me a few questions, and I told her my mom's story and how it had spooked me. She stared at me long and hard as I talked. It was just starting to make me feel uncomfortable when she said very softly, I've seen him too, just once, November 5th, 2000. She didn't elaborate, 
didn't expand on anything. Before I could ask her any more about it, she changed the subject uh, to the tasks at hand for us closing the ride and walked away. I never did get a chance to broach the subject again because she seemed to be all business following our conversation. Oh, it's oh, it, it's. I realize I read over a paragraph. I was on a roll and I couldn't it stop. Okay, zone. it's all good. I am not sure why I didn't look up the date she mentioned sooner. I guess it never crossed my mind. Not until later. After that, Karen seemed to take an odd interest in me. Ooh. During our nightly backstage walkthrough, she started personally showing me all the various nooks and crannies Ooh. of the haunted mansion. I bet she did. Very deliberately pointing out hidden details like a tour guide that I imagine not many other cast members ever noticed. Okay, so hidden details is what she's pointing out that they never noticed. Yes. Is it? Okay. I got to learn the ins and outs of the attraction fairly well. In a way, I felt weirdly accepted, almost initiated. It's hard to describe, but I was grateful anyway. Which brings me to 2004 and the main reason I tell this story. I've been at the Haunted Mansion just under a year by that point, and my initial worries and irrational fears had finally begun to subside. I hadn't seen anything out of the ordinary during my time spent in the attraction, whether on set or backstage. Any notion of real ghost sightings was just the occasional in-joke between cast members, and even I wondered if my mother had just made it up to scare the people that worked with her, and it had stuck around as a local legend since. It was a February night, and I had just come back from my last shift of the evening. I was assigned to the load area, and the crowds were relatively sparse, since it was around parade time and the route at Magic T Kingdom passes through Liberty Square. Those riding either had no idea it was happening or ducked in to take advantage of the lull it caused. I had grown per pretty accustomed to being a grim, spooky, spooky maid by now, since the Haunted Mansion is the one attracting attraction where cast members don't have to smile. I escorted the few guests that came through into their doom buggies and walked the moving conveyor belt at an easy pace. The people coming through gradually became fewer and fewer, which seemed odd mm -hmm. considering it wasn't really that late at night. And then the inflow stopped. There was a good five minute stretch after I sent the last couple guests along where no one came down the corridor, just me, all alone, with a constant loop of familiar haunting sounds and the never ending line of June buggies. I started to get that itch of worry again as my mom's story popped back in my head, but I tried to push it down. Another couple of minutes of nothing, not even another cast member to accompany me. Usually there's more than one of us in there. And I really started to get nervous. I just, I was just reaching for the phone to communicate with whoever was at unload when it rang, making me jump. It was Karen's voice on the other end. Keep your eyes peeled, she said. For all no. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled. Oof. Nope. Hang up the phone. Yes. It was hard to tell over the crappy receiver, but I think she sounded on edge. For what, I asked. Last I checked, Karen wasn't on duty at unload, or on the ride in general that night. Oh god. Even before she responded, I had this terrible feeling I knew exactly what was about to happen, and I looked up as she said something else I don't really remember. There he was. There she blows! Oh no. Oh gosh. Just like in my mother's story, he came gliding down the line in a doom buggy that should have been empty. Thin, near skeletal hands folded on the head of a black cane, a dusty suit, and a face that reminded me of some scavenger bird. He was so still, he could have been a statue. Apart from the fine wispy hairs on his head, nothing on him moved. He didn't blink, and his blue eyes didn't even twitch. It was like he was boring a hole in the back of the car in front of him with his gaze. Now, I was on the verge of panicking, seeing a childhood terror before my very eyes. I stumbled back as the car passed me by, wanting to run, but fighting with the logic that this was all definitely some elaborate prank. That was prank. I don't know why that whispered out of my face. Uh, the man was lifelike, sure, but he was way too still to be real. It could have been some old animatronic from the Hall of Presidents, for all I knew. Just made scarier, and set here to freak me out. I mean, I certainly didn't feel that way, but my brain was going a mile a minute, 
And that was the best explanation that came to me in the moment. The moment passed and off he went, without a glance in my direction. I watched it go with my heart going crazy in my chest, and Karen shouting at me over the phone for confirmation. I picked it up and choked out what I'd just seen. There wasn't even a pause before she responded. Get in the next car. Now. Don't lose him. <laughs> no. Okay, but... Okay, let's, Walk, just, but let's just take a minute and think about this man. Karen's a murderer. So, homie is ghost. Homie scares a lot of people for, like, decades now. Mm -hmm. So... Why is he scary? Is it just because he has blue eyes? Because, like, all he's doing is just sitting there staring straight ahead. He's not, like, he's, holding an axe. He's just sitting there. Menacingly! Right. He could so, hit you with his cane he, and say, get off my lawn. Or get could. off my ride. Well, here's here's the thing. What if he's, like, not trying to scare people? What if he's just like, yeah, I work here all the time. Let me get some free rides right. every now and then. Yeah. Like, or, like, he's I just... died here. The very least I could do is enjoy my time as a ghost Ooh. and ride some rides. I... You put, you put, like, an EMF sensor on you just here. Wee! <laughs> I... This is the best time ever. I have a prediction. You okay. have a prediction. Um, so, because David King is a Disney nerd and knows all the Disney facts and figures, um, a lot of people dump loved ones' ashes in the Haunted Mansion. Um, because... Because they're weird? Because they're weird. Huh. And I'm like, maybe this is the ghost of some loved one who was dumped in the ride. I think that um, takes Disney adulting a little too far, don't you think? Yeah. Maybe um, it's Mike, and he died yeah. in the future and then just came back. Yeah. I was, I was make, I was trying to make a Mike connection to yeah. It could be Mike, yeah. Or it could be Mike's papa. Papa! And then once he saw Mike in there that night, he was just snatched. And Mike was going to stay with him forever. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, nobody really cares that much about Mike, so I guess that's why Karen's like, Maybe Go the get ghost him. does. Maybe the ghost really cares about Mike. But this you is... Don't know. This is world. This is not land. This correct? is... This is... So, because, this is Disney World. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, it was land in the first one where Mike disappeared, so I... But isn't this the same girl? Or is this a different... I thought the, the, pro the protagonist in the first... In the first story was a guy, right? Was it, was it specified? It might not have been specified. But narr um, narrator in first story is different from protagonist here because yes. protagonist opens with, I read this blog post yeah, about yeah, yeah. someone, you know? And it... I read this blog post and it was pretty terrifying. Yes, <laughs> and they totally mixed up world and land, so... Yes. But there just happens to be two Karens. There just so happens to be two Karens, and the narrator says, um, I thought it was a coincidence, but, but no, not anymore, what after if, what happened. What if this is like one of those special author tricks where Karen <laughs> isn't a real name, but Karen is used in like the um, societal context of which we know Karens now. Mm. Like it's, that person isn't maybe. named Karen, that person is a Karen. Okay. Or so maybe it's an acronym for something. She's an archetype or an acronym or something. I don't know. Should we continue? Yeah, we should so. continue. Okay. So, get in the next car. Don't lose him. Like, the worst suggestion ever. I hissed to Karen that this had better s not to be a prank or I <laughs> swear <laughs> to God I'm going to report you s because this isn't funny. She assured me it wasn't, which didn't help. And that it was important I watch my surroundings and not lose him. Surprisingly enough, I did just that. I was maybe two or three buggies back from the one I'd seen him in, but without even thinking, I hopped on the ride and let it carry me into the depths of the attraction. Didn't <clears throat> last protagonist feel some weird urge to hop onto the ride, too? Mm, after he had been... Well, it was after he had gone downstairs, he came back up, and he heard, was like, oh, do I get in the buggy or not? And then yeah. he heard, like, the clunk, clunk, clunk of someone coming. And he was like, yeah, yeah I'd rather just yeet myself into one of these buggies okay. and see what happens. Okay. So <laughs> so it's kind of similar. Yeah. Okay. The ride carried on as normal. Just me and a possible ghost somewhere in an endless line of empty clamshell cars. Nothing happened as I went through the library, the music room, and up the stairs, surrounded by cobwebs and a giant day-glow spider. 
I recall gripping the safety bar tighter than I ever had on any roller coaster, looking around every side to make sure I saw him coming, prop or no prop. I did not relish the thought of seeing him suddenly loom out of the shadows around me if he somehow slipped out of his doom buggy. As my buggy reached the top of the stairs and turned to face the endless hallway, I caught sight of a figure in the shadows behind the floating candela candelabra, and my heart went into my mouth. It opened a door on the right-hand wall and slipped inside, closing it behind. In the same instant, I thought I heard a strange bellowing sound that I could only discern because it wasn't part of the normal attraction audio. Hmm. In hindsight, I feel stupid for just hopping out of the car. Yet, I got out anyway, pushing up the safety bar and stumbling onto the floor. I figured this would trigger the sensors and force the ride to stop on an alarm, but everything kept running. They must have been disabled, I realized. The man had apparently gotten out too without setting anything off. But how? The attraction couldn't run without the safety measures on. I stood for a bit at the entrance of the hallway, too scared to go down, um, to go down it, but eaten up by not knowing what was happening. I'm not sure where the courage came from, but when Karen didn't show up right away, I got fed up and moved down the hall toward the candelabra. The endless effect of the hall is created by a large mirror at the far end, covered by a thin black scrim that gave me the corridor its misty quality. This close to it, I could see my opaque reflection walking to meet me. Most of the doors down there were facades, though one leads to a small machine shop where animatronics are repaired. I know for a fact the figure had not gone through that door, as it was on the opposite wall, which confused me even more. I was just testing a few of the door handles when a beam of light came bobbing around the corridor and Karen arrived, flashlight in hand. I immediately rounded, I immediately rounded on her and demanded to know what the hell was going on. I was scared out of my mind, so it probably came out as more pleading than angry. Karen just sighed and shook her head. She pushed, she pushed past me and turned the handle on the door nearest the mirror. It opened onto a stark, narrow stairwell leading down and to the right. You know this ride just as well as I do, she said, looking back at me. Did you know that this was supposed to be here? I shook my head no. Good, she said, gesturing for me to follow behind her. Neither did I. That's some Miss Frizzle bullshit. What are you talking about? <laughs> Did yeah. you know this was here? <laughs> no. Good, me neither. And you just keep <laughs> going. Karen's Miss Frizzle. Karen is Miss Frizzle. <laughs> oh, don't put that on her. Miss Frizzle would never just be like, hey, there's a ghost in that. Seat bounce, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to protest as she started descending the stairs and followed only because I didn't want to be left alone in the corridor. Karen seemed pretty stoic which was some small comfort as we went down the darkened stairs, her flashlight showing the featureless gray walls and dirty black steps. It wasn't, very it wasn't a very long stairwell, but I was sure it would take us below ground level, making it a possible access point to the utility doors I didn't know about. So they're also going underground. Wasn't that the thing last story? Yep, they, keep, they, they, they keep going further they underground. They see a ghost and they're like, ooh, let's go into the earth. Let's go down. <laughs> I had so many questions, but most of them went unsaid because I felt this tense urge to be quiet. Not just from Karen's body language, but the faint sounds I heard coming from the bottom of the stairwell. The best way I can describe it was the bellow I had heard before. This wheezing keen, like a person doing a bad impression of a dog's howl. I know it sounds dumb, but it was so out of place it gave me chills. The sound stopped as we reached the bottom. The stairwell ended at a utility door marked with a sign, CAST MEMBERS ONLY. Karen hesitated, and I think I saw her visibly shudder as she opened the door. Not once did she look back at me. This is why I tell this story. The hallway past the door was almost identical to the one described at the Disneyland mansion. So they are at Disney World. Yes, yes, they are. It was a long, straight passage lined with doors, themed just like the hall above with their demon eye wallpaper and flickering candles. And just like the other <laughs> story asserted, the doors all had plain white signs mounted on them, marking them as prop rooms. I say almost because looking, oh wait, I say almost because looking back at comparing accounts, there were two main differences. First, the hall had eight doors compared to the six at Disneyland. And instead of the hall ending at another utility door, 
It was a dead-end wall with a mirror in an ornate oval frame hung from it. At the time, I was more confused and unsettled by that fake-sounding whine that seemed to come from down the hall. Karen tensed and started marching along, ignoring the closed doors. Hesitantly, I reached for the handle of the first prop room, but Karen said, Don't bother. It's locked. I couldn't take it anymore. How do you know? I cried. What is this place? Why are we here? Karen looked over her shoulder at me, weary and grim. I don't really know, she said, but we followed that thing down here, and I want answers. I need you to watch my back. The way she said that thing stuck out to me. I assumed she meant the man with the cane, but she didn't refer to him as him, as a him. Then it hit me that the shadow I'd seen in the endless hallway might not be what I thought it was. It was a dog. It was a dog. <laughs> All right. That recurring howl startled me just as I thought of this. It was louder than before and even more plaintive. I peered down through the flickering gloom and saw the door cl closest to the end of the hall was slightly ajar. Karen pointed her flashlight in that direction and started walking quickly, <clears throat> making me have to pick up the pace. I almost slipped on a wet patch and realized the whole floor past prop room one's door was damp, water having soaked into the thin carpet. Strangely, there was no mildew smell. Just, just something. <laughs> <laughs> just, just. She's so terrified she's repeating just, herself. Just, just, just something, something chlorine-like like bromide. bromide. Oh, oh, bromide. bromide. If you've been on any of the water rides at a Disney park, you know the smell I'm talking about. We pretty much made a beeline to the open door. Some parts of this hall were not up to the usual Disney quality of repair. Besides the wet carpet, there was an empty space for a candle sconce beside prop room four. A bunch of exposed wires poking from where the fixture should be. Karen only stopped once to, ten to tentatively test the handle on prop room seven which was locked. Water leaked out from under this door, and I figured this was the source of the soggy floor. Prop room eight was open just a crack, not enough for me to see what was in the room. Karen turned to me again and held up a hand, a clear sign she wanted me to stand back. I wasn't about to argue with her because I really didn't want to be the first one to open the door into that dark room. She stepped up and pushed the door very, very slowly. The hinges made no noise, not the slightest creak. Yeah, no the slightest creak. No the slightest creak. I'm sorry. <laughs> she opened it just enough to peer in with her flashlight on, though I couldn't see anything with her bulk blocking the way. I kept looking back down the hall where we had come, feeling like I needed to make sure nothing came up behind us. I was really hoping Karen would just, like, SWAT team kick the door in with her flashlight, like, propped up like they have their guns. I was really hoping that was going to be the way she went into that room. No way. Just slowly opening the door. I guess she's scared. That is not in Karen's personality. I feel like we're not being consistent with Karen's personality. Yeah, because she killed a guy in the first one. Probably. Right, right. She's checking to make sure that body didn't leave. Yeah. <laughs> then, while I was turning my head to look... <coughs> The howl happened again. Oh. So loud, so close, and with so much more whining agony, it nearly gave me a heart attack. I had a moment to realize it had come from the room Karen was looking into before her bo body suddenly jerked forward into the darkness like she had been yanked off her feet and the door swung closed. Oh, shit. I freaked out and rushed to the door. It wouldn't budge. The door was locked. I pulled and tugged at the handle and kicked at the door while screaming for Karen. My adrenaline level was so high, I couldn't even think about trying something more logical than that. I just knew I had to get to Karen because I suspected something horrible was in that room with her. Something splashed on the soggy floor near me and I felt drops of water spray my ankles. I froze, my breath catching in my throat, and looked. Nothing was there, but I swear I saw a depression in the damp carpet right near me. Glancing down the hall, I saw only the empty corridor we had come down, but movement in my periphery made me look the other way, toward the mirror on the wall. The man with the cane stood behind my gaping reflection. So close he could have rested his chin on my shoulder, I felt a cold breath on the back of my neck. <sighs> I completely <laughs> panicked and bolted down the hall, pretty sure I screamed the whole way. 
I shot up the steps two at a time, nearly tripping on the skirt of my uniform as I tried to put as much distance between me and the man as possible. Soon I had flown out the door and back into the endless hallway, and I turned to run through that artificial darkness. Or would have, if I hadn't turned the wrong way in my blind terror, and collided with the full mirror reflecting the hall! When I came to, several of fellow cast members were huddled around me, or I had sprawled on the floor. I was disoriented and sick with dread and could barely explain to my concerned rescue party what I was doing there. They told me later a guest riding the ride had seen me lying there and had asked when they had added a dead body to the attraction, which brought them to me. Checking later confirmed I had been unconscious for several minutes. Oh. Could you imagine having been in the cart right before she got knocked unconscious? Like you're just riding the ride and all of a sudden some lady just... Ah! And then just out. Yeah. That would have been awful. One of the, like, super big Disney fans that had been at the Haunted Mansion ride so many times was like, whoa, never seen that that's part before. New. That's new. I should even... come in them on a job well done. Yeah. That's the worst place to, you know, have an accident at some horror attraction mm -hmm. because they just think it's part of the, the show. Well, you, you just... think the ghost would pick something that wasn't very clever? Mm hmm He's a smart ghost. It's a smart very ghost. smart ghost. He knows how to pick these people he knows off. how to woo an audience mm -hmm. yeah. is it my turn to read i think, so. I think okay. so i was whisked off to get first aid unable to get a word out in in time about karen and the hidden corridor dazed and confused as i was thankfully my run-in with the mirror had not done any long-lasting damage to either myself or the mirror though i suffered a serious concussion and was forced to take a leave of absence to recover <clears throat> so let's reread that um, had God, not done any long-lasting damage, but I had a serious concussion and was forced to take a leave of absence. That is recover. a serious concussion. That, that is a serious. That is that is long-lasting damage, though. So it yeah. wasn't too bad. I was just given some some brain trauma, but I'm fine. <laughs> When I returned to active duty at the mansion, the old feeling of unease was in my gut again, stronger than ever. That first day back, I was so on edge that I would jump at the slightest breath of cool air or sound of my name being called by another cast member. Bro, that's brain damage. Everyone was really <laughs> kind and welcoming, but I know I came off like a nervous wreck. Yeah, that's brain damage. That's trauma. That's, that's, okay. That's still, your brain's messed up, girl. She's fine. Totally fine. Or guy, I don't know who he is. Okay. They're fine. Karen was conspicuously absent, of course. I started asking about her right away, and the other cast members said they had no idea where she'd gone. Word was she had either transferred or quit, though no one I spoke to had seen or heard anything concrete. Management seemed unable to give a straight answer either, since they claimed they didn't know. It was like she had vanished completely, which she did, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, she did. She got yanked into the room. She got yeeted. She got, she got pulled on into that room. Mm -hmm. Frustrated, I went back to the endless hallway after hours and tried all of the doors along it. All of them were stuck tight and appeared to be facades. Blueprints and layouts I managed, blueprints and layouts I managed to procure after revealed. After revealed. Okay, hold on. This sentence is a whole issue. Blueprints and layouts I managed to procure after revealed no sign of an access point from that scene to anywhere else, apart from the machine shop. It made no sense. I could tell by the end of the first day the other cast members were thinking I was a basket case. I could see it in their sidelong glances. One of them, a friend of mine, who I'll also leave anonymous, said he had no reason to blame me and said everyone just felt relieved I hadn't died too. That gave me pause. And I asked him what he meant. Mm. <clears throat> that she, that they hadn't died that too. we were glad you didn't die <laughs> that you didn't die as well as well as Karen or the or kid that mom. drowned or the kid that drowned yeah mm. Mm. so much death and intrigue he seemed surprised I didn't know but explained that the night I'd gotten hurt and Karen had retired another cast member had been in an accident backstage the man dressed as Pluto had been struck by a parade float and killed Oh, that sucks. <clears throat> Imagine the kids watching. Oh, no. Yeah. Those working outside had immediately gone into damage control mode, halting the parade and keeping things as quiet as possible to the guests. I put in a transfer request the following day. Thing is, throughout all of this, I worked to convince myself 
that everything I had experienced that night was the result of my head injury, weird dreams and hallucinations I had while I was out cold or semi-conscious, coupled with the short-term memory loss. I had to because for a long time after I couldn't bring myself to look in a mirror out of fear I would see something behind me that shouldn't be there. Even now it sometimes makes me uncomfortable. It was the only logical explanation I could come up with, the only way I could convince myself to keep working at Disney World, and it succeeded, made perfect sense, until I read the Grad Night story. Now it's all come back, nagging at me, telling me everything I saw and felt that night were all too real. Putting all of this down has only helped refresh my memory and it scares me. I keep glancing over my shoulder, worried I'm going to see the gaunt visage, visage? visage mm -hmm. of the man with the cane standing there, staring at me. I also keep thinking about the way Karen jerked through that door, like something had grabbed her and pulled her in. I'm not sure how much of the, or I'm not sure how much this will clear up, but it needs to be done. Something bigger is going on here, hidden under both haunted mansions in both parks. I would go so far as to say something evil, and with everything in mind, I've done research, compared accounts. I'm telling you, there is a tunnel that connects Disneyland to Disney World. That's, that's a long, long tunnel. At, that's a long ass <laughs> tunnel across the country. Yeah, I okay. mean it's long enough for six and eight doors. That's how that, she was transferred. That's how. To another. That's how they end up moving the carriage. That's how she got oh. seated. She was taken into that room, and that room leads to the tunnel. Or it's one of those things. It's one of those things where there's like a portal. A portal to Disneyland. Yeah, it's like whenever like you, you go to the bank, how you can put the canister in the, the tube and it goes uh, and just sucks it up. Yeah, I, I was thinking more about like fast travel, like in video games. But yeah, the that's not realistic. The, the, oh, I'm sorry. We're talking about real world Future, applications uh, here. Futurama style bank machine tube. Uh, you don't think Disney World has the money nor the manpower to make such a system? Are you crazy? Yeah, they probably they probably do. I mean, I'm sure they do. I just think it's funny that you open a door and suddenly you're just sucked to Disneyland. <laughs> I'd love to open that door. <laughs> and, you, and you're just gone. Yeah. All right. The day my mom saw the apparition, someone had died. The date Karen had mentioned, November 5th, 2000, another in-park death. This one on Splash Mountain. And someone else had been killed the night I saw him. With, the, with that last accident in mind, by 2004, eight people had died on Walt Disney World Resort property. There were eight doors in that hidden hall. <gasps> oh. The author in the Grad Night incident described a fatal accident happening the same night. Looking that up, there were six deaths at Disneyland, counting the one as of 1983, yeah. and six prop room doors mentioned. So that's where they hide the bodies. For props. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. In the haunted mansion. Yeah. They all go to Pirates of the Caribbean eventually. I fully understand this is speculation and the whole thing could be coincidental, but at this point I doubt it. I understand now why Karen rushed over to the mansion when she heard someone had died. She put the pieces together. She knew somehow the man with the cane would appear. Who he is, what his role is, <clears throat> and what he wants I don't know. Is he anything like the hat, box, the hat box ghost at the Disneyland mansion? I have heard Disney is putting old Hattie back into the attraction soon, but I get the feeling whatever they add won't be what those three kids saw backstage in 1983. I guess I'll finish. Mm -hmm. That's really the worst part of it, not knowing. All of this just raises more questions for me, and the only reason I haven't left Walt Disney World is to keep my ear to the ground and get more information. All I can say is I have a feeling that if someone managed to find either of those hidden corridors beneath their respective haunted mansion, those hallways would be longer now and have more doors. Ooh. Ooh. Spooky. How many Spooky. Karens would you find under there, though? Oh, That's the question. Yeah. It's all Karens. Or maybe 2020 was the year they released all of the Karens from the Disney World stories. Look, whatever happened in 2020 is 2020's business now. I'm done with that. Yeah, yeah so Man. that's interesting. Every mm -hmm. time someone dies, they add another prop room underneath Haunted Mansion, and they let the, I guess they let their body decay until it's a skeleton, does and then the, they use it as a prop somewhere. Does the um, story say that, or are we just I am inferring? making that up right now. Yeah. I also want to know what Homie's mom thought of the situation. Like, 
because mom knew about the ghost. Mom had worked at Disney World. And if I was the mom and I knew for sure that there was a ghost that was being sketch, and then my child was also working at Disney World and had an accident and was mentioning said ghost, I feel like I would lose it, like a little bit. I also think it's interesting that both uh, storytellers uh, had things happen where they like went down there, freaked out, ran back up and like either hit their head or threw up or had something crazy happen to their body. Like mm -hmm. after they went down there, they came back up and something wasn't right physically. So maybe it's like it's acting as some sort of like Grim Reaper-esque thing. Like he's transporting the the souls down to the underworld of Disney. Disney underworld. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how does his transference of the souls affect the protagonist physically? Like, you mean... I mean, Karen was taken to the underworld in this yeah. one, and Mike was taken in the last one. Yeah. And in both stories, both protagonists who survive get sick. Yeah. Where does the sick come from? Just uh, encountering the Grim Reaper type yeah, person. Yeah, having a near-death experience. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. And Homegirl, like, ran her face into a mirror pretty hard, and they thought, people going through the ride thought, <laughs> another dead body. Like, that's... Like you get knocked out cold, like that's a yeah. that's a big that's a big brain boo boo. Like okay. that, that's so, some traumatic stuff. Yeah. Okay. So she almost died, and death almost took her. Almost. But not today. Not today. Yeah. So maybe it's not. You know, maybe that hallway that's all decorated, even though it's supposed to be a backstage area that doesn't need decoration, is really, you know, on your way to the afterlife, and um. You know, maybe these these people, you know, were dying because they had an accident in the haunted mansion or something. Yeah, and I mean the the hat box ghost and the old man with the cane both have like similar features in that they're old and scary looking. Yeah, and they both involve instances where it's like, hey, we went through this door and we went down into this low this lower area and then we came back up and then like. Another random day after that, that doorway no longer exists. So it's like, once somebody dies, a portal briefly opens to carry them down under Disney. Mm -hmm. And then it closes after they've been laid to rest or something. Or like, once the unease in the park has been uh, lifted. Oh, are you ta you're talking about how Pluto got hit by yeah. a parade float and how the boy drowned. Yeah, like the kid drowned. Uh, Pluto got hit by a car, and um, in the other story, somebody died, right? They uh, they had an accident at the water slide and died. Is that not what they said in the other one? I don't remember. Um, I believe you, though. I, I, I mean, we could go back. I, miss, I may be misremembering, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that in the first story, there was a death that night... And somebody had died somewhere else in the park. That's why the police cars were there. Oh yeah, because they because exactly right. they didn't care about the fact Mike was gone. Somebody that they could find was actually dead. Like yeah, uh, and maybe I don't know. I don't know why if someone else died, like a, a, an unrelated person would then be like sucked into the void under the haunted mansion. Unless yeah. it was, like, somehow taking their place. I don't I know. I guess that's the rule of whatever forces are at work. It's like, oh, Pluto got hit by a, by a parade float. That means Karen's on the chopping block. Karen's gotta go. It's your unlucky day, Karen. Pluto just had to get hit today. I think, I think a good thing to remember is also, if you ever see a ghost go through a sketchy door that shouldn't be there, don't follow them. Yeah. That, that seems it, like a good idea. It seems like the protagonists are compelled to follow for some reason. They're being possessed. Yes. So. By the mansion, because it's haunted. Yes. Um, yeah. But the man with the cane isn't like a, isn't a person in the ride. I mean, it's not a figure in the ride, is it? It's just a ghost. Right? Yeah. Unlike the last one. Unlike the last one where he was supposed to be a prop. Mm -hmm. Well, didn't they say that this guy could just be one of the Hall of Presidents things? 
It could be he could have wandered from the hall. What president has a cane? All the old ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, president Taft has been <laughs> escorting. <laughs> has been escorting people to the underworld. <laughs> Well, some people probably didn't even need them. I think that at some point, canes and, like, walking sticks were cute yeah. and trendy, you know. Yeah. So it could be that some presidents had them but didn't actually need to use them as canes. Oh, they had wispy. FD, FDR had a cane. And said he had wispy hair, or wisps of hair. Um, Let's see, does FDR... Although, have... although it did mention it could have they could have made him up to look um, scarier. So, I could believe it was a president from the Hall of Presidents. FDR has wispy hair and blue eyes. FDR, it's, it's the ghost of FDR, Franklin FDR, Delano FDR, Roosevelt. Roosevelt! See, I told you he wasn't going to hurt you. All right. <clears throat> we, so. we solved the mystery, everybody. Yeah. It's FDR at Disney World. I wouldn't be surprised if um, they reused like, the FDR mold for the Haunted Mansion. Because he's old and scary looking? Yeah. And also those two attractions are right next to each other at Disney World. And I bet David King knows that. That he probably has all the Disney trivia. So that might be... Yeah. So the the man with the cane I could see being FDR. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, a prop. Another haunted figure. Animatronic. Do you, do you know what one of the most popular FDR quotes exists? What? The only thing we have to fear, fear is, is fear, fear itself. itself. Holy Nice shit. try, King. You failed. We figured yeah. you out. We, fi we cracked the King code. We did it. Okay, so FDR escorts people to the underworld whenever Pluto gets hit or a boy drowns. Yes. Okay. So who would be the hatbox ghost then? Abraham Lincoln, because he has a top hat. I, maybe. I don't know. I feel like the hatbox ghost was never, you know, anything but the hatbox ghost. I mean... I think they just made the hatbox ghost with the... I don't think he was a repurposed president. Did FDR also wear... John F. Kennedy... And the last inaugural top hat. There was a last inaugural top hat? Yeah, I guess you had to wear top hats so when you got FDR inaugurated. So stole GFK's hat. hat. Yes. Oh my God. I think we're getting a little <laughs> away from the story. It's okay. Um, this is the story. Yeah. This is so, the story of a girl. In terms of quality. Um, this one was better than yesterday, I think. I think they're both. I think they're both good. I like that this one uh, built off of that one. Yeah. And, actually, and like, I don't know if it being both Karens like was actually a thing or if it was. Um, well, it got Mike and then it got Karen. If this is the same Karen, yeah. and so naturally next it's going to get whoever narrated the first one. So the I first the first story three. the first story takes place in the eighties. This one takes place in the two thousands. And this one takes place in the two thousands. So the next if we're so, talking twenty years. So Karen could have been at Disneyland in the eighties. She gets sucked through the portal tube at Disneyland and dropped at Disney World mm -hmm. right after the park is being built. Mm -hmm. And she goes to work at that Disney attraction. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's trying to find the link between the two parks. And then, just as she's getting close enough to figure it out, FDR swoops in and yanks her into a closet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that wall at the end of the hall was not really a wall, after all. You... I don't recall. Because if... you know Disney <laughs> sets up those fake prop things all the time, yeah. like the trick mirrors and all that, so maybe there never was a wall. Maybe. Mm. Is this a good time to mention there's a part three? What? Yeah, but this one is in the shape of a, or in the style of an internet forum, it looks like. Mm. 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 We're going to have to look through that tonight and see yeah. what's happening with it. 
All right, but should we wrap this one up? I think we should. All right. Um, I I thought it was a good story. Yeah. Um, it was, yes. It was a story that was good. It was, yes. It was, yes. And it built off the last one well, and he revised, you know, some of his errors in the first one. It was self-aware, and he just um, built his lore with these stories. And I glanced at the third one, and it looks like it might have to do with um, the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland Paris. Um, Whoa. The Phantom Manor. So then after that would be the what is it Tokyo? Tokyo. Yeah, and I don't think there's a fourth one, but if there is this coming soon, yeah, theater soon. I hope he continues this series if he is actively writing it. But yes, I think we will probably go to the next um, haunted mansion story as the next one. Um, Before we go, it is time to plug things. Will, did you make a YouTube channel yet? (laughs) No. In the last okay. 24 hours. In the la- in the, since, the, since the podcast started and I said I didn't have a channel, I have not made one. Oh. I have not made a channel. Yes. I, I will get on that as soon as I feel like it. Sounds good. Amber has a podcast, or will by the time this is uploaded. Yes. Um, a few friends and I are going to do a podcast over... Um, some education-based topics and running an effective, um, equitable classroom. Uh, we all teach math, and so it'll definitely be focused around math, but we'll hit on all kinds of education topics. So um, if you're interested, there will be a link to said podcast, episode one, um, in the description of this video. So if you want to learn more about learning, come check us out. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, yes, please do check check them out because they are wonderful and amazing. Learning how to learn is important. Learning is important. Yes. All right. Um, this has been Mac and Scream with Assorted Horrors, also known as Ben. Um, this is us uh, signing out. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye everybody. everybody. All right, goodbye, stay spooky, and don't get scared out of sorts. Okay, bye.